こんにちは、アイムジャパニーズユーチューバー、マブ中川。Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome to today's episode of Mav College. Let's go dive into today's topic. Today, we're gonna be discovering India. Speaking of India, what kind of stuff comes to your mind first? Since I joined Indian tech company in May 2019, it's been nearly four years. I know Indian business are better than normal Japanese people do here. My first impression about Indian people is quite positive, to be honest. They tend to be open minded, persistent, responsible, and diligent in business. Well, all of people are not always good people like that, but at least Indian people around me are so nice, fortunately. I'm so glad to stay connected to them in business and social media from Instagram. And also, I'm so grateful to have a presentation about India today. Believe it or not, India is getting bigger and bigger in tech business.、Uh, they are ranked at fifth in countries with the most AI investment, for example. I saw、uh, India、uh, was a、uh, fifth leading country where investing in standards,、uh, stands up, offering、uh, AI based products and services as of last year. By the way, for those who、uh, don't know AI, AI stands for artificial intelligence. I'll talk more about that、uh, in another video later. So I, I sense、uh, my Indian company is growing. Growing so fast every single year, and I don't think Japan is getting,、uh, you know, it, it's gonna beat India for a global tech competition forever because Indian tech、uh, engineers are super intelligent. I don't even think、uh, what they are thinking because they are too smart. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the uh, general politics, uh, political background about India. I know you might、uh, disagree with me over the controversial opinions when it comes to politics, but、uh, please hear me out for the second. And then,、uh, if you still have、uh, additional suggestions or anything you want to claim, please leave me a comment below, okay?、Uh, I'll go, go through with that. As a Japanese resident who owns a Japanese passport,、uh, I don't know too much about the politics as to what's going on in India, like what they are thinking about the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. But the balance in a Russian Indian relation is un- un- undergoing a major chance. Since the、uh, invasion of Ukraine by Russia uh, broke, out, uh, broke out last year,、uh, Western Uh, democracies have uh, condemned uh, Russia, slapped uh, wide ranging sanctions,、uh, cut back on natural resources such as oil, gas mainly, and、uh, they sent an、uh, unprecedented、uh, amount of arms and ammuni- ammunition、uh, to help Ukraine、uh, defend itself. However, the biggest democracy made up the world's largest populations, India, hasn't done any of it. Why? India is one of the most powerful countries in the world, but、uh, they do not do、uh, what we expect. Well,、uh, I have been working for Indian tech company as I told you before, but my upper director doesn't share any credential information with me, like uh, only uh, when they、uh, decide something important, they share to me. Yeah, behind that, what happened, they j- just、uh, keep it secret. I was even wondering if、uh, India was an ally、uh, of Russia, uh, Ukraine, uh, China, the United States, Japan, or Western、uh, democracies, but I think it depends. Depends on political and uh, e- uh, econ- econ- economical situation, of course. China is current,、uh, currently uh, being uh, India's largest trading partner, and those two countries have also extended their strategic and military relations. That's a huge connection, right? Yeah, on the contract, uh, made, uh, India、uh, makes a strong tie with Russia. When uh, Russia started a conflict with uh, uh, Ukraine, uh, Prime Minister Modi refused, refused to assign a blame for the violence of Russia. He just voiced、uh, more concern over the、uh, spikes in、uh, global food shortage, food shortage and、uh, gas price appreciation triggered by the war.、Uh, if he completely shut down the relations with Russia, India can no longer continue to place o r d e r for the weapons、uh, made in Russia. And besides that, India still wants、uh, cheap Russian oil as well. India has already、uh, been the third largest oil consumer and it needs more,、uh, even more to fuel、uh, all the growth. But,、uh, because 
India has a few oil and natural gas reserves on its own. Most of oil has to be imported. That's why India has to stand for Russia, whereas the European, uh, European Union, called the EU, is facing a once a year lifetime dilemma with how to cut its heavy and costly dependency on Russian energy. India seems like uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't care about the EU though. Yeah, instead of that, it seems to have a more comfortable and functional alliance with APEC regions called Quad. Quad is a composed of uh, four countries, the United States, Russia, India, and Japan. India is probably thinking these three countries would be uh, more cooperative and supportive than China and the EU. They have been prompting a practical cooperation in a wide range of fields, including a quali a quali quality a infrastructure, maritime secure, climate change, counter-terrorism, cyber security, and stuff like that. Among with, uh, these four countries, India is now uh, leading the world and uh, growing the population that is expected to overtake and surpass China's population quite soon, within 2023. It is estimated that uh, uh, India will have a population of 1.4 billion. That is an incredibly amazing number. That's also uh, one of the reasons why I target and pull out my contents of YouTube in India market because once again, India has a lot of population. We Japan has a good relationship with India. India's population is uh, larger than other developed nations. They speak English and uh, product and the service are cheap. Uh, I still uh, believe my prospect and my uh, business approach for growing my channel uh, subscribers in India market is quite good. I targeted uh, India uh, as the next era of the uh, uh, era to do business. Although I spent most of my 20s studying uh, Mandarin Chinese because China would be a great to do the same, yet I kind of uh, stayed away from it because, you know, like I said, China's uh, political background was too huge. Yeah, on the top of that, China's population is declining to nearly 1.3 billion by 2050. Yeah, because they have continued a long term one child policy since uh, 1979. As the overall population in China declines, uh, the economy will also slow down gradually. Japan is seeing the decline uh, due to its aging population, uh, losing more than 3 million people over the past of 10 years. The population growth is uh, considered to have a positive effect on the economy. Definitely, it matters for sustainable development, right? Yeah, I used to study Mandarin Chinese when I was 20, but I kind of uh, quit studying because Chinese was not a really prerequisite language to do the business in Japanese community. Well, English is apparently easier and faster in communication with overseas people. So if you want to be a bilingual, your native language and English are must lang language capability for sure. Some Indian people speak uh, broken in English that is hard to understand, but at least understandable level of talking to each other. Even if you are not confident of uh, English too much, don't worry about that, they don't speak it as well. Uh, there is so many ways to well communicate to each other in a way of chat GPT as well. With the latest uh, AI technology, uh, I think it will be uh, more easier to understand any of foreign language you never handle. I'm so intrigued by a chat, uh, chat GPT. By the way, uh, I, uh, it was uh, just uh, developed by uh, OpenAI and released in last November. I'll make another video on YouTube for more details, so please look forward to it if you are also interested in tech stuff, of course. I'm so excited about it. In terms of AI, India also has a powerful capability and knowledge of developing a tech industry. Studying India is pretty much the same as studying AI. India is expected to uh, keep growing up in the next 25 years and it is ranked number one in population for sure. The most populous country with nearly 20% of the world population, over 1.4 billion people live here. Taj Mahal and it has some, uh, some of amazing mountains, palaces and rich culture of foods, silks and it also happens to be home to the largest gathering of people on the planet. Are you kidding me? No, you are not. This is real. The world is changing dramatically, uh, shifting from China to India now. How come? How come India is growing so big? How come its economy is set for explosive growth this coming decade? 
If you wanna know the answer, I have to explain the background of India. If you all know the uh, brief, uh, brief background of what happened historically and economically over the past uh, half of the century, you will figure out what I meant. Let's get a jump uh, with the history of the uh, history in the first half, and for the second half, we go talk up, talk more about the future of India. All right? Great. Please stay tuned with me and listen close. Here we go. So, as of today, the top three countries are United States, China, and India, respectively. India is getting outstanding uh, among with them. The first thing first, the overall population. As I told you, India will be number one in population. How about the GDP? Number five, gross domestic product. The overall growth is expected to be 6.9% for, uh, for, for the full year. Nearly 70% of uh, India, India's GDP is driven by domestic consumptions. India is now ranked 5th in GDP. Yeah, which country do you think made India ranked up? England. England got ranked down. India actually uh, to, uh, over, overtook England. Do you know what that means? It means a lot. India used to be a British colony from from uh, from from uh, 1757, uh, Great Britain ruled India, right? India's GDP was estimated to uh, moderate 6.4% uh, this fiscal year in 2023. If, uh, if 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 there is a recession, uh, which most people seem to believe there will be an uh, estimation that the uh, US GDP will grow 0.2%, uh, just 0.2%, uh, yeah. China, by, by comparison, uh, comparison uh, which is usually the global leader in economic growth, grew only 3% in uh, 2022, and India is gonna uh, grow 6%. Remember, anytime there is an economic slowdown, uh, it usually uh, means uh, people are gonna work less, produce less, consume less, and overall companies are gonna make less, which is usually bad things for e economy. So, for India to grow, 10% uh, over this next decade is pretty crazy. India's uh, intense manpower is a big part of uh, what made it such an economic force on the world stage. Japan is struggling uh, with the aging population uh, equipped with uh, skills that are misaligned from what is really needed while India still has a very young and productive uh, workforce. That is called the manpower uh, that has enabled this co uh, economy to capitalize uh, on a, a world's event like AI or that might be a problem to us. But good, good or bad, uh, whichever goes to, uh, it is a great opportunity to India. In the last five years, the company, uh, the country has made a headline uh, for scoring manufacturer jobs that, are, that have previously gone to China or, almost by default. China's era of intense economic growth appears to be uh, coming to end. Also, what makes uh, India greater is that uh, India has owned nuclear weapons, which can be launched from missiles and most likely aircrafts, and don't forget submarines as well. India spent 2.3 billion US dollars to build and maintain its nuclear forces as of 2021. Well, India has never disclosed the size of its nuclear uh, stockpile, but in, in any case, it's overwhelming me so powerful. We have nine uh, nuclear holders after the World War II. The US, Russia, China, UK, France, Pakistan, Israel, North Korea, and India. Remember, five out of nine holders were winners of the World War II. Although Treaty of Non-Proliferation of uh, Nuclear Weapons called NPT was agreed, India owned nuclear weapons on its own without an agreement. This treaty was aimed to uh, prevent the spread uh, of nuclear weapons and technology in exchange for access to a peaceful use of uh, uh, nuclear ecology, econo uh, energy such as power generation, the treaty required, uh, required nuclear states, states to abandon any future plans to build it, its weapons, but India has refused to sign an agreement. Why? Because India claims for discrimination by dividing the world into the country which has nuclear weapons and do not have. You know what I mean? Besides, India was located in between uh, Pakistan and China. If these two countries uh, invaded uh, 
invaded India at the same time, India is gonna have to surrender. India doesn't want that, of course. The same worst scenario with Russia Ukraine conflict might happen to India too. Especially, India still has, uh, has, has, has been in conflict, conflict with Pakistan over unsolved tensions and border dispute between two countries. So, their relation is always unstable and changeable under any political circumstance. India has to be on guard uh, or to uh, well pre prepared for emergency by having a fairly comparable arsenal. I mean, uh, military facilities. That's why India initiated uh, its nuclear weapons development as early as 1960s. You know, when it comes to a political topic, Pakistan people get too emotional. I have a friend of mine from Pakistan. We had a reunion and, and, and then we had a dinner together on the other day. We are supposed to have fun, but for some reason, uh, he just uh, got too emotional when, when uh, talking about the politics. He believes in Islamic, and I understand he, is a, he has a face, but uh, I don't wanna get, get, get into it. You know, just too much political stuff for me. Yeah, so for normal people like me, uh, we don't wanna care about how our country is corrupted. Just like uh, let the uh, government handle it, you know? So be careful for those who are uh, atheist when hanging out with uh, uh, persistent Pakistan people like my friend because they are too outrageous sometimes. <laughs> Most, mostly um, they are peaceful in Japan, but sometimes when drinking alcohol and start talking about the invasion of Russia, they turn out crazy anyway. As for uh, Indian Prime Minister Modi has announced that uh, India aims to become developed nation in the, 20, in the next 25 uh, years. Uh, it sounded like a big resolution, but, but I think it's actually doable. Yeah, their goal should be achievable uh, within 20 years. Uh, I suppose so, because India is uh, already uh, one of the leading nations have uh, made uh, that, uh, that, that have uh, made a remarkable progress in economic growth, population growth, and agricultural revolution that has transformed the nations from chronic dependence uh, on uh, grain import into a food supplier for exporting. That is a big progress, to be honest. India is making more and more profits to get wealthy and becoming a global leader now. Uh, without a, a huge effort, uh, I swear to God, it would not have been achieved for sure. Indian, Indian people are so smart, hard workers, so, you know, uh, there's no question about it. However, the thing is that India has not been a successful country from the very beginning. Since uh, it, uh, independence in 1947, uh, after 300 years, the British has finally left. In uh, 1947 was the year when India was not a even republic and China was still in the throes uh, of uncertain civil war. At the era, uh, Asia was so in chaos. Yeah, in 1950, China took Tibet from India. Uh, India increased its territory to Tibet's border with India. Although China uh, consolidated and expanded its uh, control over Tibet, India has, ha, has not, uh, was not happy for that, of course. I'm not capable uh, of having a personal opinions or perspective uh, about uh, which country is right or wrong, but the thing is that uh, conflict is un unavoidable. So, uh, in uh, 1950, uh, Tibet became a part of China and the Chinese government uh, invested heavily in infrastructure uh, projects such as the build of the road, railroads, uh, airport and dams were connected to Tibet to other ports to, of China so that China gets so accessible more easily across the border, you know? And what happened afterwards is obviously a uh, territorial dispute with India and Bhutan over, uh, over areas that are uh, claimed for both nations. In 1962, because of that, Sino-Indian border conflict broke out as uh, Russia invaded uh, Ukraine in the recent years. You know, here history is repeatable, folks. There is no perfect solution or agreement or settlement. Compromise is always a solution at the best effort. So, India at the time had to uh, make an unfair uh, agreement and policy with China because China uh, was too powerful to control over Tibet. Unfortunately, uh, India kind of lost the conflict, so India took a step back, had to uh, stay away from Tibet 
Tibet's border. Of course, India didn't keep silent for good. In 1970, uh, India was also concerned about Pakistan's growing influence in the regions and its close relationship with China. India sought to develop a close strategic partnership with the Soviet Union, which provided a military,、uh, economic, and technological assistance to India. So, could you? Could you just uh, visualize uh, the entire relationship of the,、uh, demonstrated in the several agreements and collaborations, including in the Soviet Treaty of Friendship and Cooperation in 1971, and the joint space program between two countries was launched at the same time? No, really, right? <laughs>、uh, they've had a strong bond alliance since the 1970s. You see the standpoint? Uh, this is a part of the reason why India is、uh, trying to、uh, give Russia a hand from the behind the back. Invasion of、uh, Ukraine is a pretty,、uh, pretty much the same scenario as the India China border conflict in the 1950s to the、uh, 1960s. After the World War II, Soviet Union was、uh, fighting against the US. The、uh, Soviet Union wanted to have some companies to counter、uh, the growing influence of the US because at that time, in the 1970s, US reconciled with China. Mao Zedong and Richard Nixon had a meeting. At the time,、uh, China and the Soviet Union were engaged in a bitter feud, and, and then the US、uh, found a chance to exploit to undermine the power of the Soviet Union. Uh, China, uh, uh, the, the US was seeking to tap into,、uh, tap into China's vast potential market and develop a new trade,、uh, trade relationship. All of these factors were contributed to the critical decisions to、uh, reconcile with China. So, like I said, not permanent solution, but compromise, so to speak. The temporary agreement to、uh, make peaceful political situation longer, you know? As for India, the Soviet Union、uh, relation was okay at the moment, but the problem that India was facing is Pakistan. They were、uh, still in、uh, armed conflict for decades, mostly over the disputed territory of Kashmir.、Uh, they have、uh, different prospects of、uh, geopolitics, religion, ideology, and stuff like that. A lasting solution has yet to be found. We know this is too complicated. Yeah, even I had a big fight with my co worker from Bangladesh. We lasted only a few months、uh, to dispute each other, but as compared to the scale of the nations, that's a wholly different story, right? It takes,、uh, it takes forever to get the things settled down. Unless they have a common goal, utopia, like something they want to achieve together, reconciliation is、uh, way too far from making, you know? It might be、uh, inappropriate for me to state that,、uh, you know, there's a good things about a war,、uh, like a ki- killing each other. No way.、Uh, the war is destructive, leads to loss of lives. Create a psychological trauma,、uh, economical, ec- economic damage, and it causes pain, suffering to an individual and the community. It should be avoided at all costs and whatever. However, it is also true that the war generates millions of trillions of dollars in the background where, we, where, where no one knows. The world history proves it. When India and Pakistan had a war, yeah, Russia was so happy for that because Russia exported armed weapons to India and India bought them all. Against that, Pakistan uh, had a military alliance with China and China exported two weapons to Pakistan in return. See how much、uh, they were in common with the、uh, uh, invasion of Ukraine attacked by Russia? Jesus Christ, it's scary alike from their back, right? India continued to de-、uh, depend too much on the military connection with the、uh, Soviet Union in the 1970s to back up the conflict with Pakistan. And after the struggling for independence from Pakistan, Bangladesh was established in 1971. The original struggle、uh, began in 1947、uh, when, when uh, British India was divided in India and Pakistan. Pakistan、uh, believed in Muslim and India、uh, believed in Hindu. They had a kind of a you know, the religious, conf- religious fight. Geographically,、uh, West and、uh, East Pakistan was separ- were separated by India. Yeah, Bangladesh Uh, the distinct ethnic group hoped for the equal treatment from Western Pakistan, but、uh, they refused to hand over the powerful authority to、uh, Bengalis,、uh, triggering a violent crackdown. 
Afterwards, in 1971, uh, Bangladesh declared uh, independence from uh, Pakistan. Uh, during the war, Indian military forces played a crucial role in providing a military support to uh, Bengali uh, guerrilla fighters. After nine months of re uh, liberation uh, war, after Pakistan surrendered, uh, I mean, the Bangladesh emerged in, uh, well, as an independent, of, inde independent of nation. Uh, that is a belief uh, history of how Bangladesh was established. Uh, in 1980s, however, the world was dramatically shifted at 180 degrees at the moment. Guess what the hell happened? The Soviet Union was corrupted.